debt ceiling drama. The money party just continues to roll. And we have not been invited to that party. In fact, we are actually paying for that party as U.S. citizens. If you're interested in learning more about our thoughts on this topic, please continue listening. Welcome to the Red to Black podcast hosted by Warner and Mario, two Marine officers and businessmen. In this series, Intel Brief, we give you on the ground intelligence and market updates to improve your ability to buy, invest in, and build highly profitable businesses that pay you to own them. Mario, what are your thoughts on this shenanigans going on in Congress about, oh, we're going to raise the debt ceiling or not? Yeah, the solution is real simple, Warner. If you can't pass a balanced budget, you should be disqualified for running for re-election for Congress or the Senate. If you can't have a balanced budget, the federal budget cannot be balanced with $1 in, $1 out. You should be not qualified. You should be literally disqualified disqualified from running for re-election. Simple, simple fix. I guarantee you those folks will figure out a way to come up with a balanced budget. Taking on debt is unsustainable long-term. In, in the short term, there's a Hail Mary. We're, we're trying to scramble to survive. You need to take on debt. It's World War II. You know, our business, you know, we went through a, a, a customer collapse and we need to take on some debt to survive, to make payroll, to, to fight another day. I get that. But long-term, taking on debt and more debt and more debt, you are a slave to the lender. You're, you're being owned. We're being owned by, by foreign governments and by the Fed, which is a semi-quasi-private bank. That's who's owning all of our debt. So that's who we become slaves to. It's unsustainable long-term. Those are my thoughts. Warner. Great points. And let's actually look at those numbers on the ground. And I actually pulled up the other day the financial report 2020 for the U S government. I was just, I, I, I knew they sort of had one, but I never had looked at it. And when I pulled it up, I was like, Oh, this is interesting. So I look at their liabilities, 32 trillion, 743 billion. The number I just, I got to think of these numbers in my head before I see them because they're so large. Yeah. Let's go back. What's, what's the first one? How many trillion in, in debt? 32, 32 trillion. trillion. Seven hundred forty-three billion. This isn't including all the unfunded liabilities. Medicare, that's just Medicaid. That, that's just straight debt notes that we owe back to. Different, yeah, yeah, to, yeah, exactly. Thirty-two trillion. Exactly. Next number, Warner. The assets are five trillion nine hundred and fifty billion. So that's almost that's six times liabilities to assets. That's huge, man. If you look at Oracle, it's like. 50, or I mean, I don't know, 80, I thought you had off the top of my head, it's 80 billion in assets, 100 billion in liabilities. That's a completely different picture. They can pay down their, we've done some numbers on this, they can pay down their debt with all their cash and their income coming in. If they just put it all towards that, they can do it in about three years. This, yeah, go ahead. That's right. So let me, let me, let me, let me hammer on that. So a wonderful company is able to pay off all their debt with their cash and cash equivalents and their operating income. They're able to pay off all their debt in less than three years. I would say a really, really solid business has about a hundred percent of their operating income to debt. So their total debt is no more than a hundred percent of their operating income right around that number. This is a horrible, horrible situation. We're 32 trillion in debt and we have 5.9 trillion in assets. You know, let's just let's just say how many years would it take us to pay off that that thirty two trillion if we didn't spend another dollar? It's a miserable position to be in. This is not a, this is not a sustainable this this country. The way we're running our finances is not sustainable, and, and people are saying you know modern money. Yeah, uh, yeah MMT, MMT is that right? Yeah. MTT, MMT, MMT, modern money theory. Well, you own the debt, or we have the we have the printing press to pay off the debt because the debt is in is is in USD. Little problem there, folks. Little problem. Little history lesson. Currency units don't create wealth. There's tons of currency units in Zim, in in, uh, in Zimbabwe. Tons of currency units in um, Venezuela. There's tons of currency units in Venezuela. The problem is is creating currency units doesn't create goods and services. There's tons of currency units available. You, you go to the grocery store and there's no goods and services. There's no goods to buy anything with those currency units. So you printing off a bunch of currency units to pay back this debt, it destroys incentives for farmers to actually grow products and put it in, in, um, in grocery stores. They're, they're, they're destroyed. The incentives 
it whacks out the incentives for people to actually create goods and services. There's less goods and services as you're just printing off more currency units and more currency units. It's disincentivizing people from working. Yeah, exactly. And just to go back to what you're saying, Mario, that that ratio, how you said 100% to 100% of the income to debt, I just want to make sure we're, we're correct on that one because Oracle's net income is $15 billion and their debt is $100 billion. So they, they don't quite meet that requirement, but they're a great company. So how, how, do you, how do you sort of assess that? I mean, I know in the, in the best case scenario, that's what you're looking for, but Oracle is uh, with about six, six times. Yeah, so I'm not going to give away everything that I like to invest in. Uh, I would just say personally in your personal life, your total debt, so the numerator over the denominator is your operating income. Your total debt to operating income should be no more than about 100%. That's a good balance sheet. That's a good – that's enough debt. You're into enough – you're in sufficient, sufficient debt. You've taken on some debt, low-cost debt. You've, you've been able to scramble and do some things in your life. Okay, you have a little bit of debt in your life. When you're getting a 300%, 500%, 1,000%, you know, just ob obscene amount of debt to operating income, you're a slave – your operating income, all of the money, all, all your labor is going to go to pay off your debt. Eventually, everything you're doing all year long is going to be going to service the debt. It's a miserable position to be in. Don't invest in that. Don't want first, don't put yourself in that position. Don't invest in businesses in our position. And if you're in a country that's running a balance sheet like that, start building a plan B. Start looking at an exit strategy. Don't don't get stuck in a country that's having horrible finances like that because eventually it is a Zimbabwe. Eventually it is a Venezuela situation. There's just a ton of currency units printed off, but there's no goods to buy with. There's nothing. There's nothing to buy with all those currency units. So look to look to exit. The wealthiest people in Zimbabwe, the wealthiest people in Venezuela. I'll, I'll, I guarantee you, the wealthiest people in Venezuela aren't in Venezuela. Yeah, I, Miami, I saw right them in Miami. I saw a bunch of Miami yeah. and. Yeah, what they executed, they executed a plan B. Yeah, and plan B is another series that we run on this podcast, which teaches you how to shore up like assets that you have in hand, resources. So if the system that you're in, US or any other system, that monetary system collapses on you, you have a backup option to roll to. So that's a great series, which I'll link below. And yeah, Mario, what you're really saying is really sound advice. Like the the core is that 100 to 100, 100% 100 uh, net income to debt. Now, I'm a... I'm, debt, debt, debt to net income. Debt to net debt income. Debt is the is numerator. Okay. Net income is your, op, your, your, net, your net income or your operating income is the denominator. Okay, got it. So debt, debt on top, net income on the bottom. Okay. So now in real estate, I won't get into the numbers, but I don't quite have <laughs> that net income to... That debt, real estate is a different animal, which we can go into at a later point. I love, we'll, we'll do a conversation on this one on that debt to net income, how it applies to real estate, because I'd love to get your take on that, because real estate's a different beast. But going back to this example of the federal government, when I go to their, their income statement, they're, they're running a deficit, I think, of a trillion dollars or more a year. So not only are they stacking on more debt, they're not even making any money. So folks, this is a situation we're in. We're, we're this debt ceiling drama. It's the same thing every single year. It's like, oh God, we can't pass. We're going to shut down the government. How about reducing your spending? How about, as Mario said, if you can't balance a budget, get the hell out of here. Because all – yeah, go ahead. Well, the problem with that, Warner, is that the government is now 60% of the economy. So if you're reducing so, – so in essence, if you're reducing – you're spending the government spending. You're reducing government spending. You're reducing GDP. It, it, it gets it gets it gets crazy. So now the argument is, well, we're in fantasy land now. We're just going to take on debt to create to create prosperity, to create GDP, goods and services. It's it's we're in we are in uncharted water. I mean, I guess Japan. You can look at Japan, which is actually in worse worse case. And they still make some really high quality, I mean, motors, Japanese motors, Toyota, Yamaha outboard engines, some of the optics, some of the camera, some of the scope, some of the things they make in Japan are, are as good as anything ever has ever come out of Germany, as good as anything has ever come out of the United States. Any, you look at inter, any, anything coming out of Italy or France or Sw uh, Switzerland, some of the stuff that's made in Japan is world class. 
and their government's horrible. The people are people. Are, go ahead. Yeah, but here, but here's the thing with Japan. Some guy, I, I don't, I forget what he was saying, but on the George Gammon show, they were talking about this. That Japan situation is different because a lot of our debts is foreign debt, and we owe it to other people. Japan's more of the sovereign debt, and they could pay it off. They have the assets backing it to kind of pay it down. We're not in that situation. They do a lot of manufacturing. They have a lot more capabilities in their economy. So it's not, it's not, we'll do a podcast on that too, but it's not two equivalent debts. They've structured their debt differently than we, that's all I'll say right now, than we've structured our debt. We are in a way, way worse situation. That's how they've been able to truck along for so long. But we're like, debt's out to the highest bidder. All our manufacturing's off seas. We, we're the opposite of plan B in terms of our country. We've given over all our producing power to someone else. It's real, it's real simple, folks. When something happens and you label it with the correct term, the Wuhan flu, and China says, don't say that. And you go, okay, whoa, whoa, okay, we won't say that anymore. We won't say that anymore. When Saudi Arabia flies planes into World Trade Centers, when, when the terrorists all come out of Saudi Arabia and they say, hey, don't say that anymore. And we go, okay, okay, we won't say that anymore. We won't, we won't mention that anymore. We'll just say Islamic terrorists. From where? Uh, I don't know. We don't know where they're from. You got to realize, well, how do they have that much power? How does China have that? How, how can China tell us what to do? Hey, you're not going to call it the Wuhan flu. Hey, hey, Saudi Arabia, how do you have that much power? You're not going to call them Saudi Arabia. They're, not, they're, they're terrorists from Saudi Arabia. You're not allowed to say that. Don't say that. And we don't. You got to realize, oh, they got some power. They got some power. They own the debt. They own the debt, folks. That's power. We, we are slaves to the lender, who are who is the biggest? Who are the two biggest lenders of the world to uh, to the U.S., China, Saudi Arabia? Ah, interesting. So this is we're kind of delving into some murky waters here, but our point is very, very simple. Whether it's the U.S. government or it's your own business, watch out for these shenanigans, these debt dramas. Now, the U.S. government, as we talked about, six percent of GDP, very challenging situation. Here's what I'll say about that: you're either going to have the pain train now. Or you're going to have a massive pain train later. So that it's economics or economics. I want to make one quick point about real estate, Warner. Is when you owe a bunch of money to banks, the banks get to tell you how to run your business. They 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 demand things from you. I want to see your insurance. I want to see your maintenance records. I want to see. I want to see how you treat your employees. I want to know what, what kind of medical procedures you require for your employees. And if you don't provide the type of medical requirements that I want you to provide, we'll pull your loan or we'll make it very difficult for you to refinance your loan or we'll make it very difficult for you to do business. They have power because they've made the loan to you. So you're going to see this. You're going to see this in multiple areas with real estate folks is that they're going to be told exactly what to do with their employees or they're not going to get another loan. That's an excellent point, and that's one of the reasons why I've been in real estate for about 10 years, and I'm transitioning with Mario to more content. Now, I got it. YouTube, Spotify, all the platforms there that we are on, they can come down hard on us, but we're on multiple different platforms spread out, spreading out our economies of scale, and also we're developing other businesses from the ground up with cash building the cash, more cash, reinvesting it, like what Oracle's doing, because we see what's coming. So I got it. Like, yeah, some we, you know, I'll say we own some real estate assets and I see the writing on the wall on that one and I'll take it for what it is right now, but I'm transitioning. See, that's me as a podcaster, as an individual, Mar and I are teaching you how to be, become or become better businessmen and get into more profitable businesses. I'm being honest about what I'm in and what I'm dealing with and why I'm transitioning to another area. I'm not going to lie about it. Yeah, I'm in some real estate industry, businesses. The debt to net income is definitely not at you know 100 to 100 or 1 to 1. It's definitely way off. And yes, when you are getting money from someone else and they own the majority of that asset through the money, they can do a lot of interesting things and they will do. I can see the right on the wall. So that's a lesson for all of us that are in assets that are heavily indebted to really watch your back and start transitioning out of those assets, paying down your positions and start building other assets that are less indebted. Any final thoughts, Mario? Nothing to add. I appreciate your time, Warner. Yeah, it was a great podcast. Thank you for the insights. Thank you for helping me see more insights. And for our listeners, please subscribe, like, comment, and we look forward to connecting with you in the future. Mm-hmm.